1934, uh, a visionary named Paul Otlet wrote a book about information technology, which was remarkable in the way that it foreshadowed what we're now calling the internet. Let's just take a quick look at this. Otlet publishes his most important book, The Treatise on Documentation, the book on the book. This is where we find the most visionary pages, where already the concept of the computer emerges. Here, the workspace is no longer cluttered with any books. In their place, a screen and a telephone within reach. Over there, in an immense edifice, are all the books and information. From there, the page to be read, in order to know the answer to the question asked by telephone, is made to appear on the screen. A screen could be divided in half, by four, or even by ten if multiple texts and documents had to be consulted simultaneously. There would be a loudspeaker if the image had to be complemented by oral data, and this improvement could continue to the point of automating the call for on-screen data. Cinema, phonographs, radio, television, these instruments taken as substitutes for the book will in fact become the new book the most powerful works for the diffusion of human thought. This will be the radiated library and the televised book. Wow. That's amazing, oh. isn't it? That wow. So, Alex, the, the radiated library doesn't roll off the tongue quite like the internet, right. but, <laughs> but w was he on to the same concept? Uh, yeah, I think you could say that. Yeah, so yeah. that was yeah, yeah. 1934, right? So why, why has nobody heard of this guy, right? Um, the, uh, well, a couple of reasons for that. One, it was, uh, he was working in Belgium in 1934, and we all know what happened in Belgium a, a few years later. Um, he actually died during World War II, and his work, he actually developed, tried to, this was not just theory, he actually tried to build this. Um, he collected an enormous uh, 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 sort of vast index card catalog of about 12 million entries. He was basically trying to catalog all of the published information in the world and created an, an infrastructure for doing that. Uh, you could actually send in a query via telegraph and uh, <laughs> researchers would go and get the answer and then telegraph it back to you. It was kind of like a, you know, wow. analog ancestor to Google, I would say. <laughs> so, you know, these, um, co these concepts are, are so appealing, aren't they? They just didn't have the technology that made it very uh, effective. Right. I mean, think about it. This was before semiconductors or microchips or hard disks or any of that, and yet somehow he saw it coming. And I think part of that is it, you know, it wasn't just a question of the, the technology, although he saw those trends emerging, but it was also uh, you know, a, a number of sort of uh, sort of social confluences were taking shape at that time. You had this incredible, uh, sort of a second uh, explosion of knowledge during the Industrial Revolution when the printing press became industrialized. And whereas Gutenberg was certainly a big deal, we tend to overlook that, that when the, the real proliferation of published information really sort of swept the globe was during the Industrial Revolution when you really saw true mass literacy and, and a vast outpouring of, of published knowledge sort of taking shape. And, People like Paul Outlay and, uh, and a, a lot of librarians were really wrestling with the question of how do we, what do we do with all this stuff? And so he saw that you know, there were things like television, like radio, um, and that there were, way, there were sort of technologies emerging where we might be able to find a new way of, of networking this stuff and making it available on a global scale. So 